The exhibition is about the bronzes of the greatest sculpture of the modern era. Indeed, we mark the beginning of modernism in sculpture with the work of Rodin, which radically departed from traditional attitudes toward the presentation of the human form. Rodin carved marble, but his real medium was clay, and these works in clay were subsequently cast in bronze, and we will feature some of the great examples in this exhibition. The exhibition Constructing Identity is the literal manifestation of its title. African Americans are a constructed identity that came about as a function of the world slave trade, but as we became part of the fabric of this country and made this country, we have our own stories and our own narratives. And so what we've done is selected from the collection a body of work by established artists and we've tried to get those people in line with artists that you would not have heard of and what we're hoping is that people can really come to see that African American is really a verb not a noun and we are not a thing that is fixed. So issues of common humanity are dealt with but as a uh, composite it really speaks to the complexity and the significance of the African American as an identity within the larger construct of America herself. This spring, we will highlight one of the earliest and most significant European paintings in our collection. It was made in the 1370s by an artist named Francescuccio Ghisi. We show this painting in isolation as a gallery picture on the walls, but it was once part of what we call a polyptych, a multi-part altarpiece. There were nine elements in all, and this spring, we are reuniting all of the existing elements coming from museums across America. The interesting thing about John Yan is that he had a coherent manner of thinking uh, about design at a scale of a doorknob to the scale of the Columbia Gorge. And the power of that, of recognizing that beauty takes place at all of those scales and can be thought about and actually executed at all of those scales, I think is a really important thing as we move into, you know, such a different time. And we tend to separate ideas of environmentalism from ideas of design, and John thought about them together. And I think that that's the really important lesson that I hope we can convey. I say nothing of a, a story of someone who isn't you know, widely known now, who was at one time extremely famous nationally, always more famous nationally than he was here, uh, but who had a really profound impact. It's very accessible. You recognize it. He's a realist. All the YS were realist painters. But what's really, I think, most intriguing is that as you delve into the works, there is a deep critical evaluation happening by the artist and the artist sort of thinking about the sitters, the landscape, and you move beyond only what you see and you move into the emotional side of things and the psychological, and I think that's really important with all three artists, but in particular Andrew and Jamie. Looking forward to Japanese Currents, which happens in early December. It's usually about 10 to 12 films, all from Japan, kind of representing the cross-section of Japanese cinema that's going on today. Uh, everything from anime to comedy to drama to action. And it's always a really cool kind of kaleidoscopic uh, program that is very pleasing to audiences. Fresh Film is all about the next generation. It's about the 13 to 18 year olds that are in school making films, at home in their bedrooms making films, out on their skateboards making films, and it's a chance to get to see what the next generation of filmmakers and creatives are thinking about and the kind of experiences that they're experimenting with at this point in their lives. The Northwest Filmmakers Festival is one of our small handful of regional-based film festivals that occur, um, I would say, within the world, actually. 
So this is gonna be the 43rd and regional meaning Oregon, Washington, Idaho, Montana, Alaska, and British Columbia. So looking at different topics that people are exploring, different themes, different technologies, um, and how that may relate to other films and other programming that we see throughout the rest of the world. In February is PIF 40, and we're excited about that. We've been looking all year long, saving up things, uncovering things from all over the world, and we're really interested in trying to use PIF not as so much as just an event for film buffs, but as a way to, to connect with diverse communities that are in Portland that don't get a chance to see culturally specific films and introducing them to what goes on internationally. Coming up in January is our annual uh, Real Music event. Very lively showcase. We'll probably have two dozen films, everything from silent classics with live performances to some retrospectives of composer Bernard Herrmann and Hollywood films that he did the soundtracks for. So it's a combination of moving image arts and popular music.